name's Tom. I play in a band called Poisonous Birds and we're going to have a look at our new single mood stabiliser, how we wrote it, how we put it together. Let's do it. This song was actually started by Finn, who plays drums, and he did this this little demo that is called Seeding Drum Deers because his eye key on his MacBook was broken. Uh, so everything Finn sends me has stupid names that I can't read. And <laughs> it sounds like this. recognizable as like the main bit of mood stabilizer that was made in alchemy in logic which i don't know very well because it just has too many knobs and is really intimidating like it does so much uh which is really cool but I, yeah i don't know how finn navigated it and did it but it sounds really good um what was really interesting about this is that when i ended up turning it into mood stabilizer this demo and, and the song were in entirely different tempos and yet I just dropped that sample in wholesale. And apart from a few chops, that was it. Like I didn't tempo shift it or anything. Um, I did in fact try to make mood stabilizer in logic and just use this. But as soon as I moved the tempos around, it all broke. So I had to just do it in audio, which was actually a bit of a nightmare to like get them. Like, Cause I wanted like movement and modulation and some interesting things to happen to that sound. But I had to do those gestures at the wrong tempo, hoping they would sound good at the right tempo. And we got there, but it, it took ages. Let's play some more. Because I thought that sound was pretty cool, I exported that at some point, and it was in my Octatrack made by Electron, which is my kind of go-to happy accident machine if I don't know what I want. Um, I pull this guy out and it usually tells me or helps me to discover something interesting. I was messing around on here and I, I did this beat. I was exploring, you know, this beat with the with some filter ideas, which obviously ended up in the song as well. Um, and then I think I just pulled this sample out of the out of the memory on it and, and like I said I just dropped it in at the same tempo. And then that was kind of it. And I was like, all right, that's an idea. But one of the whole things of Poisonous Birds has always been like this like strange intersection of like like band music, guitar music, rock music that I grew up on and and the electronic music and dance music that I've become interested in in my sort of mid to late 20s. So um, yeah, like, like this was an obvious moment to like do this. without that awful filter. And um, actually that kick is one of a bunch of samples that I've made for myself using this guy, which is the analog keys, also by Electron. And it's just a keyboard synth. I don't actually own a drum machine, you know, in, in a traditional sense, like a, a drum synthesizer. Um, I have loads of stuff on here, but I, so many old sounds of like, you know, whether it be a, an 808 or a 909 or whatever, they come with baggage attached to them. They come with context and history and oh, that record that that sound was used on, which is really cool. And you know, there's, you know, particularly on like the low tide EP, there was a 909 clap that came in on one of the songs. So I, I quite like dragging that context and all those things that those sounds evoke into a song. But this song, I didn't want that. And this is one of the kicks that I made on this on this synth. Um, Actually, like despite Finn playing live drums and his live drums do make it into the song, um, we've, we've, we've kept an electronic kick through the whole thing. Um, right, let's move on. So, so yeah, that was kind of how, how this happened. And then there comes a point where this starts to become inhibiting and I'm like, okay, let's get the computer. I've broadly been using Ableton for the last couple of years. So this song was mixed by my friend George Lever. The rest of the EP I'm actually going to mix myself, but uh, George is amazing and I took him um, groups so like I think it ended up as being 24 stems of how many I don't know 100-ish tracks maybe so um, this is this is as I left it when I exported them 
So um, I suppose we should start with the beat. So here's the here's the beat that, that I pull out the Ops track from the Casio thing. And yeah, on it I I actually took the filters off on the Ops track and redid them on here and used a bunch of effects. But I wanted to mention this filter, which is really interesting. It, it's a, a model of the uh, Akai. Is it the S950? I think it's called. Is the old like jungle sampler? Again, it's like it drags that context of like. 90s rave music and stuff, which honestly I'm a little bit young for, but uh, drags that in, which is kind of cool. So I used that on the, on the, on the beat, and then got, uh, this is what I called Spooky Ghost Pad, which is just a really nice. Here he is again in the verse. Obviously. We've got the main the main hook. Now this is actually made up of two layers. The original sound that Finn did is here as a bottom layer. But it was a bit washy and a bit like rocky. And I wanted something a little bit a little bit chunkier, so I, I I went back, fiddled with it, brought it back in, and there's all these chops that you can may or may not be able to see. So that's a little bit drier. Um, I use this plugin a lot called Track Spacer, made by Waves Factory. And, and I applied it to the breathier one. So when the tighter, chunkier one sort of released in volume, the breathy one would kind of kind of exhale, if you will. So with it on, but with the source muted, it sounds like this. So hopefully you can hear it sort of, um, yeah, moving in and out. And then together we've got the nice, I just think has a has a really nice effect. Maybe we should have a look at some of the drums. So um, here's our kick again, the one that I mentioned. But then I've got a nice little delay on a, on it here. That's using uh, Echo, which is I think came in Ableton 10, and it's just the best delay. So literally, I use like one delay, Ableton Echo, and one reverb, Sound Toys little plate, and that's like literally everything I do. <laughs> and, oh yeah, so there's the noise hat. So this is a kind of a nice thing that I do. So I've actually got a sample of just pure white noise. So that's just literally white noise. I put a load of effects on it, like some tremolos. I use Satin Toys Tremolator because it is just really, it's really cool. The key thing, I bet I haven't even got it turned on. No, I haven't. Normally I use the exponential function, but I, I didn't on this one, but I like that it has that. Um, and there's a Filter Freak, also by Sound Toys, and a bunch of other stuff, multi-band compressor to make sure it all sounds nice. Um, and it makes this lovely thing. Which is, you know, I guess like an electronic hat, but um, I like that it kind of releases tension and builds the tension. And then, we've got, we've got live hats from Finn which we recorded in our studio in Bristol. And we've got snare. Put loads of reverb on that. I don't know why I did that. And then this is really cool. So this was Finn. He made a couple of funny stacks of like symbols and stuff on his kit. Like, it sounds like bin lids or something. I can't even remember. And we did this, but I think I actually pitched it down. So it was, yeah, I pitched it down. So it was, it was a lot higher. But we, uh, we did that. So that adds a bit of a bit of colour at the end. And then where was that um, spooky pan? Here he is, spooky ghost lead. Yeah, uh, this is wavetable, which also came in Ableton. Wavetable's just got some really nice like ways to make things sound wobbly and and like really easily. They're just like there, and it's got all these lovely like source sounds. Um, so I've been using that again as like my only soft synth pretty much since Ableton 10 came out. Um, I tend to do that. I seem to like have one thing that I go to. I'm obviously surrounded by like lots of lovely equipment, um, and some of them end up in certain songs, and some of them don't. Um, 
this one was actually like kind of computer based apart from obviously the off track but I think we started this whilst I was kind of moving house and staying with my girlfriends and stuff so um, yeah I didn't necessarily have everything quite as sorted as I do now um, but it's all like it doesn't matter it's all the same um, the peak's really lovely when I just want to get hands on with some like some tactile stuff it's like eight voice poly synth can kind of do anything you can imagine um, but yeah I mean if I know what I want like I knew I wanted like a spooky thing um, straight into Ableton and it's, it's usually there quicker which is really cool um, people always ask about the modular as well which is just there and that again that's like an amazing happy accident machine but um, yeah I mean if, if you know if I feel like if I can imagine it I can probably just do it quicker another way and certainly cheaper um, but if you don't like I said if you don't know what you want these kinds of things are really good for explorative playful work and I think that's really important like this isn't serious and it needn't be serious with you know it should be fun and I think that I think play in a sort of quite childish sense like sitting on the floor with no aim and no you know self-consciousness or preconception is a really powerful way to generate interesting ideas and end up somewhere that you didn't think you would and these these physical tactile instruments are really good for that but when it comes to finishing a song computers is as good as it gets We've got some guitar in here. So actually we, we wrote this song um, end of last year and then we, we went on, on tour in January with Sleep Token um, and, and we were able to play this live for a week or so and Jack added a load of guitar parts to the live arrangement and then we brought them back into the studio and added them to the song just before we mixed actually. So it really like lifts the, the back end of the chorus. It's with this like big... guitar thing which is really cool and then the vocal um the original one it was like a really bad version of me like it's easy to fall into that trap of like okay what do i do what's my thing and then you know doing that again and um it was awful and i deleted it one day and was just like that's not it and i, I think i honestly i pretty much just hit record and was like kind of just ad lib some thoughts and and it came out in the way that this first verse does Rough time, Small hole, feet high, round hole, trick shot. Yeah, it, it ended up quite an honest sort of account of, I guess, some of the things I've been thinking about lately, um, about about my childhood, and you know, now you know, comes the end of my twenties, and, and how I feel as an adult, and I'm quite proud of that vocal. I think it's it feels really honest to me. I, I like how it's delivered, and yeah, it's cool. To stabilize the mood The pressure And only child whose skin would break But I Oh yeah, the whole thing is side-chained to the kick But so that I can like change how the kick sounds without changing how the whole track reacts. I actually always separate the two. So I've got a track called Sidechain Trigger, almost like a clock that just hits when I want it to duck and doesn't when I don't. And then I've got total like independent control of like, the, the mix movement um, without the kick having to, to do anything. this extra layer of like distorted guitars that's pretty cool that's about all the layers um, and kind of some of the things I did um, let me know what you think and let me know if I missed anything or if you're interested in anything that I didn't mention I guess I'll try and do some more of these for for future singles. Uh, there's another one coming out really soon. So let me know what you're interested in and I'll try and tell you my secrets. See you soon.